May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, it's great to be back with you. And it's also weird to be back with you, frankly, because we've all been through so much since we were last together. I mean, has it only been three months? Goodness, it feels like much longer because so much has changed in that time. And today, as we reunite through the lens of a camera, Jesus prays for us. Thank you, Jesus. We could do with your prayers right now. What is it to be prayed for? And what is it to pray for another? It's one of the great gifts and privileges of my role to pray with and for people in places of extremity, in kitchens, at hospital bedsides, in graveyards, to pray into life's liminal moments. And I know from my experience that whatever else is accomplished, such prayer usually brings tears in the best way. It can open that flood of feeling, open us to the overflowing presence of divine compassion. Now, this isn't a reflection about the meaning, efficacy and power of prayer. I know that there are many views among us about how prayer works, how we practice it and about what it does and doesn't accomplish. Today, I'm simply reflecting on what is opened up by one particular prayer in this time of extremity. But given that Jesus is the one praying, Jesus, whom the Gospels portray as a teacher and exemplar of prayer, as one with a perfect prayerful relationship of indwelling intimacy with the divine, given that this Jesus is the one praying and that John 17 is his greatest prayer, a prayer for us. Given all that, you'd expect God to be listening clearly and answering strongly, wouldn't you? But note this, the thing Jesus praised for his followers 2000 years ago has yet to come true. So what is that? What does Jesus pray for us today here where we are in the extremity of this pandemic? What should he pray for us? What do we need from God right now? Health and healing, perhaps. A quick, safe end to our isolation. Justice and care for the vulnerable. Wise, compassionate leadership. World peace and a thriving global economy that lifts up the poor. Yeah, All or any of that would be good, please and thank you, Jesus. But none of it is Jesus's concern today. Rather, Jesus prays this. I ask that they may all be one. Unity. He prays for our unity. This prayer has been considered by many through the ages of our faith to be a climactic high point in the Gospel of John. The prayer is the closing words of the Last Supper, which in John's Gospel goes for five chapters. Immediately after praying for our unity, Jesus goes out to the garden and is betrayed to suffering and death. He goes to be lifted up, as John calls the crucifixion. When I am lifted up from the earth, says Jesus, I will draw all people to myself. My death will bring unity, says Jesus. But Jesus, surely death on a cross is a repellent thing, pushing people away with its horror. How could your cross be the source of our unity. Here's another question. 
is COVID-19 unifying or divisive? Do you share my sense that this pandemic is simultaneously uniting and dividing us? I mean, in the most literal sense, it is pulling us apart so that we can't be together. It's forcing us into isolation. It's dividing rich and poor as the worst of the suffering is being carried by the most vulnerable vulnerable members of our society. And it's dividing our world literally with closed borders and politically as world leaders cultivate enemies to deflect blame and exploit ideological conflicts within and between nations. Yes, COVID-19 is dividing us. But is it not also drawing us together in powerful ways as families and households, as a community and a nation, even as a world united in trial. Our distancing is a shared endeavour for the sake of those at risk. And it's hard. Yes, it's hard. The burden is not evenly shared. It is causing livelihoods to be lost, mental health to be compromised. But is it stretching things to say that we are embracing this suffering out of love? That by acting together in separateness for the well being of all, and in particular for the most vulnerable, we are loving one another? And I feel a community solidarity, even a global solidarity in this pandemic, the scale of which I don't think I've experienced in the same way before. Is this love that I'm feeling? Is COVID-19 our cross right now, drawing us together through suffering love? Jesus prays for us to be one today, to be in unity. Why? May they become completely one, praise Jesus, so that the world may know that you have loved them even as you have loved me. You see, it's all about God's love for the world. Our unity is to be a sign of and witness to the love that is lifted up in suffering to draw all creation together in healing. Friends, can we be the answer to that prayer, especially now in this time of pandemic? Can we be the answer to that prayer?